Hey everyone, welcome back to the build log of the DIY Sun Lamp. In the last video I designed and built the first piece of the motion system called the carriage. You can go back and check out that video for more detail, but to summarize, the carriage is what connects the vertical and horizontal axes of the lamp and allows the horizontal arm, where the LED will be mounted, to move up, down, forward, back, and even rotate around. I really like the way the carriage turned out, but I'm still only halfway finished with the motion system because while the arms do move the way I need them to, you can't actually position the arm where you need it because it just doesn't stay in place. It falls down to the base of the lamp. So today I'll be fixing that. It's really easy to take for granted that lights like this do the basic task of staying in place when you position them. In the case of the DIY Weissen lamp, there's quite a bit of weight to counterbalance, including the weight of the linear rail, the carriage and the wheels, the LED and electronics, and also the cooling solution, which might include a heavy copper heat pipe. To get our arm to stay in place, we need to counterbalance it with a counterweight that's equal to the total weight of the horizontal arm. If we can do this, we'll achieve an equilibrium that will keep the arm suspended in place, which is exactly what we want. You wouldn't know it from the marketing materials, but if you look closely, you can see that the Dyson life cycle actually has this big counterweight opposite the horizontal arm. It's attached to a belt which runs over the top, down the other side, and then connects back with the carriage. The thing I'm really impressed with is how compact they've made this whole thing. There's this giant weight on the opposite side that keeps the whole thing working, and in most of the videos and images, you don't even notice it. I don't really see a reason to deviate from the Dyson solution here, as long as I can achieve a couple of things with the counterweight. One, it has to be heavy. It has to be exactly the same weight of the horizontal arm, and that's a lot. Number two, that weight needs to be adjustable so that if I decide to add a component or remove a component from the horizontal arm, I can adjust the counterweight to accommodate. Number three, just like the carriage, the counterweight itself is going to run along the vertical axis, and just like the carriage, I need that motion to be smooth and effortless, so that's something that I need to replicate on the counterweight. And the last goal, which I think is the hardest, is that I need to do all of these things relatively inconspicuously. Ideally, all of these components would be so compact that, like the original Dyson, you would hardly notice that they were there. So I'm thinking what I'll need to do is design some sort of 3D printed container that will run on this vertical axis over here, and that container will hold the weight that I need to counterbalance the arm. Uh, the container will run along this vertical axis and it'll be connected to a cable that runs up the vertical axis and then over the top down the other side to connect to the carriage. Uh, so that's, there's a couple pieces I need. I need the counterweight, I need this piece up here that houses a pulley, and then whatever I'm going to use to connect those two things. But if I can get those pieces figured out, I think I'll be on my way to solving this problem. Um, I'm actually tempted to start here with the counterweight container, the thing that's going to hold all the weight, uh, but I actually think the better decision is to start with this piece up here because that will tell me what I'm going to use to connect the carriage to the counterweight, whether that's a cable or a belt, and it'll just give me a better idea of my constraints. So I'm going to start with this piece up here, figure that out, and then I'll come back around to the counterweight after I finish that. I ended up going through a couple of iterations with this pulley assembly, so let me walk you through the major ones. The first one was using this pulley, which is from Open Builds. I thought this made the most sense because I'm using so much Open Builds hardware already. Why not just continue using that for the pulley assembly? And I designed and printed this simple holder for it. So once it's assembled, you have this little pulley assembly. And it's a nice little component, but there are a couple problems with it that stopped me from using this design. All of the problems really just come down to the size of this pulley. It's just really big. Because the pulley is so wide, I have to make the walls very thin for it to work and also very tall. And I just don't like the way that this looks. So the next iteration of the pulley assembly was a response to this. How do we make this as small as possible? And I think I overcompensated a little bit. I went from this nine millimeter wide pulley to this tiny V-groove pulley instead. And my thinking was that if I get the pulley uh, minimized, I can make everything more discreet. So the housing for that looks like this, and this little V-groove just mounts inside. And once it's fully assembled, you can see how much the pulley size impacts the total size of the component. Here it is next to the original, um, and it's just much smaller, and I think it's getting closer to that goal of being discreet and compact. The downside here is that with such a small pulley, obviously I can't use a belt anymore. I have to use something else. And my thinking here was to use something like this. This is paracord. Um, it's made of Kevlar, so it's really strong. And this would just run over the pulley instead of a belt. 
The main advantage of this is just that it's minimal. Um, I can hide this really easily inside the component itself. And it's also really nice that you can hide it within the channels of the rail really easily. It's gonna slot in there really nicely. If I do use this, I think I'm limited to attaching it with just a simple knot to the carriage and the counterweight. And I don't think that's a very elegant solution, so I want something better. What would be perfect is if I could take advantage of the compactness of a smaller pulley while still being able to use a belt. What I ended up finding was this little pulley that's functionally really similar to the first pulley that I found from Open Builds, but way smaller. So instead of having a 9mm channel for a belt, it has a 6mm channel, making it perfect for this GT2 belt that I'm using. So this is that GT2 timing belt, and it's meant to work with this pulley from Open Builds, but you can see there's just a little bit of play inside of that, and that's space that doesn't really benefit me. But if I use this new, smaller pulley, uh, this belt still fits inside, no problem. There's just a little bit of play, but overall it's just a much more compact design. And what it allowed me to do was to design this new pulley mount with thicker walls, um, and also even room for some embedded hardware on either side. I'm really happy with this because now I have a shorter part. All the hardware is embedded, making it look really compact and discreet. And you can't really even see the pulley underneath uh, from the side profile, which I think is great. Now for me, it's hitting that goal of being discreet and compact and still providing all the functionality that we need. And it gets even better once you add the belt because not only is it a nice fit with the size of the pulley, but because of the width of the belt, it fits perfectly inside of the channel of the linear rail. And I really think this is gonna help us meet our goal of making it discreet and inconspicuous. Now that the pulley assembly is assembled and installed, I can move on to designing the counterweight and then figuring out a way to attach the counterweight to our new belt. I'm just working on the counterweight now and I think I have a design that I'm happy with or at least a first draft. The design is pretty simple. Basically what it is is a vessel where I'm going to put a bunch of lead shot that will equal the weight of the arm. A couple of important things about this design. What I'm thinking is that I can just directly model in these little tabs on the back and those can slide into the profile of the aluminum rail. That should allow this to slide along the rails uh, without too much friction. So it'll keep it aligned, but it should still be able to move up and down freely. Another thing that's worth noting is how this counterweight attaches to the belt. So one of the big advantages of the belt is that it has teeth in it, and I can use those teeth to my advantage to keep the belt attached to the counterweight. So the way that I'm thinking it's going to work is that the belt is gonna run down uh, the channel through here and through this hole, and it'll loop back around itself into this little compartment. And I have a, another piece that will slot into this, and I'll screw that in place, and it'll sandwich the belt in between the, uh, the counterweight and the little piece that I put in here. So let's print it up and see how it works. So here's the printed counterweight, and with it printed out, you can see the tabs in action. And this is the hardest part to get right when 3D printing a part like this. We need the tolerance of these to be snug enough so that the counterweight doesn't move around, but not so snug that there's friction. And I think I found a pretty good middle ground. So you can see I can slide it into the aluminum channel, and when I do, it moves back and forth pretty effortlessly, but it doesn't move side to side too much. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. One tip I can give when prototyping a part like this, when uh, this geometry is so critical, the video made it look like I printed this out once and got it right on the first try, and that's not the case at all. In reality, I printed out a series of prototypes to make sure the fit was just right, uh, and I printed out just the channel so that I could test the fit uh, just of this geometry right here, because that, that's all that really matters. Printing out this over and over would take a really long time. Each one of these takes about three hours. So uh, printing out a series of these just to get the geometry right makes a lot more sense. The other important feature of this counterweight is how it attaches to the belt. To do that, I'm using a belt clip, which is going to interlock with the teeth of the belt and hold it in place. The belt feeds in through the back through this little hole. 
and then it can lay flat inside of this little recess. Then I can insert the belt clip and I've press fit a couple of M2 nuts in the back here so I can just use a couple of screws to hold it in place. And with the screws secured in place, this belt isn't going anywhere. It's a really tight fit. This belt clip is a little bit over-engineered. Uh, there's probably a way that I could do this without using any hardware at all, but I don't know what it is. Uh, when it comes to 3D printed parts, I really like using these little screws and embedding them so that they're flush with the surface. Uh, I just can't stop myself. Uh, we have the belt secured to the counterweight, but we actually also need it on the carriage. So I'm going to need to modify the carriage design to include one of these belt clips. The new carriage is printed and you can see that it's identical to the old carriage except for the addition of this recess for the belt clip. That recess is identical to what we're using on the counterweight and so now all I need is another one of the belt clips um, and I can install this belt into the carriage. Now that the belt is installed and secure, I can combine all these pieces that I've been working on and test it out to see if it actually works. I do have to do this in a specific order. So first I need to put on the counterweight. Now I can install the carriage. There we go. So now just need to install the pulley. All right, everything is mounted up. So let's see if it works. Just gonna loop this belt over the pulley. Um, and it's pretty good. Um, it's really not fluid right now because one, I didn't tighten the wheels properly on the carriage yet. And also remember, there's no weight in this counterweight yet. So it's, it's not really a counterweight yet. So let's fix those things. Now I can finally show you what I'm using for weight. I have these lead shot balls, so I can just add as many as I need to counteract the weight of the horizontal arm. And because they're so small, it's highly variable, which is exactly what I need. They're also really heavy. Okay, so even with that, I don't think there's quite uh, enough in here, but even with that, you can see that we've achieved our goal of getting this thing to stay in place. Uh, now you can just position it wherever you want and it's working totally fine. The, the other really nice thing about this is that because there's a counterweight, uh, the force needed to lift this up is basically eliminated. Uh, so it just feels a lot smoother to move around. So let's take a look at our goals and see where we're at. Our first goal was to make the counterweight heavy, and I think we've checked that box. Uh, we needed to make sure it was heavy enough to counteract the weight of the horizontal arm, and that's definitely done. The lead shot worked out really well there. It also was really adjustable, so those little lead balls um, are the perfect format for increasing or decreasing the weight as we go along. So that, that worked really well. The third point I'm not so sure on. Um, I'm not really happy with the way that the counterweight is attached to the rail. Uh, it makes a little bit of noise when you move it up and down. It's not smooth. Um, and with the horizontal arm moving up and down on the carriage so smoothly, I really want to take another look at how I can attach the counterweight to the vertical arm. And I think we hit the fourth goal too. I think the solution that I've arrived at is pretty compact and reminiscent of the original design. So I'm pretty happy with that. But I think that their goal is really important and I don't think I'm there yet. So I wanna do a little bit of thinking and iterate on that design a little bit. I have some cool ideas for how I can make the motion smoother, but I don't think I have time to cover them in this video. So what I'll do is in the next video, I'll start with improvements to the motion system. Hopefully we can make it a little bit smoother. And then in that same video, I'll start talking about the lighting. If you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to focus more on, let me know in the comments and I can include that in the next video or answer questions independently. I'm really happy with the progress that I've made. Getting the motion system down was such a key part of making this feel like the Dyson lamp. Um, and I think the upcoming steps of adding the lighting are going to push it even further into being a real lamp instead of just a collection of parts. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.